Hey, this is Russ Anderson. This tutorial is about using 2D planar trackers to serve as moving masks for a 3D planar track. Now this is a shot that we've already seen in a different tutorial and it's from uh, Hollywood Camera Works. And in that other one we used the roto masking features to generate and ma you know the mask to keep things out of the way of the actress moving in front of this side of the truck, which is what we're going to track. So in this particular tutorial, we're going to use a couple of 2D tra planner trackers to do the job. So this is, this is going to be pretty much a ad lib sort of process here. We're going to start out by putting together a tracker that can translate, rotate, and scale on the actress's head. And I'll point out that we're using a 2D track to do a 3D tracking task, really. So it's very much an approximate sort of process. We're not really concerned about generating super clean data for the path of this tracker. We're just going to make sure that this boundary that I just created, an in-plane mask, is sufficiently large to contain the actress's head through the shot. So we are going to go switch to a handheld mode for this. The head is bouncing around fairly much. So it starts moving through the shot. And the key thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to monitor the position of the head with respect to this boundary. We're going to drop down some keys fairly regularly to keep things on track. And you see that it starts to expand at a greater rate. So I'm going to increase the scaling size here. I'm using the middle mouse to scroll through the shot a little bit. If I go scrolling in the forward direction, it tracks, but not in the reverse direction. So I'm going to move my key positions a little also. You'll notice one of the properties of this is that if your pattern is a good match to what it is that you're tracking, then tracking goes faster. The larger the disparity between the pattern and the thing that you're tracking, the longer it takes because it's hunting around trying to look for the right position for the tracker. So you can see this head is continuing to expand, but it's also the effect is that it's rotating also. And by that I mean in 3D as well as in 2D. So a bunch of different things going on. Like I said, we're really just interested in making sure that the head stays inside the boundary. And that part we don't really care about at all. I'm just going back and tuning up a little of this a little bit further. So now that's doing pretty much what we needed to do. So we'll declare victory on that. Now we're going to go and do the same sort of thing for the horizontal shoulder portion. And in this case, we only really need to translate and scale. The rotation isn't really particularly 
important to this. And we want to go and now we're going to create a more hand-drawn mask here. And notice I can actually start that off the end. Now I'm holding down control to generate smooth splines here. Now at the end I release that and we get a corner, right click to terminate the creation process. So now let's go and track on through for this one. And again, what we're going to be looking to do is to keep the shoulders inside of this boundary. And we can do that by moving the entire thing, by moving the corners around a bit as needed. What we're, what we're really worried about more is this left corner, because that's the one that wipes across the face of the truck the most. This other one, by this point, it's all the way off to the right and doesn't really matter. There we go, that pretty much does the right thing. Declare victory on that. Now we've got our two masking trackers set up. So we'll actually start the creation process for this other one at the end. So I just did a Control D to disconnect so that we get a, definitely a 3D tracker here. Now I'm going to start selecting corners on the truck itself. So I think we'll use that inner edge there. Double check the field of view looks reasonable in the aspect ratio. So now we've got an initial position for the tracker. And now we can go and start it tracking. We need to go in the other direction. We start tracking. And you should notice pretty quickly that there's one important thing that we haven't done yet. That's that our trackers aren't masking out this planar track tracker that we want to have in the background. So what we need to do is go over to this planar options panel. And again, that's sitting down at the bottom on larger monitors. And as you see, we've got planar tracker 3 is sitting on top. And we actually want to move it down to the bottom. And you notice as soon as I start moving it down, it just went underneath the shoulder and now I've got it all the way at the bottom so that it's behind both of those other two trackers. And you know, that's what you can see over here, the transparent portion of that planar tracker. So now we're ready to do the tracking. And in this case, we don't need the rotation. So I just right clicked on that to reset that. And you notice how much that improves the tracking speed because you're just telling it that it needs to consider fewer possibilities. And once it's gone through the shot, now we can go back and look for any little problems. 
the sort of problems that you might see, especially in a shot like this, you know, would be a little part of the foreground object that's sneaking out behind the mask. Or you might see a little jump that's due to the search region not being quite large enough for the motion of the uh, camera. You know, if you got a little bump in the shot. But in this case, this looks pretty good. And we're ready to call it a day on this one and export it to whatever and continue with the rest of our effects. So hopefully this has given you an idea how you can use the multi tracker masking features in the 3D planar tracking system. And in fact, here creates some 2D planar trackers as well. Take care.